As you very well said it, as a security community, what is driving us most of the time is the motivation to remove that blind trust that you have to put uh, in the solutions, in the digital solutions that enterprises deploy. And we want to replace the trust as much as possible by a stronger guarantees that are based on cryptography most of the time or which are rooted in the deep hardware levels. And here, uh, what I'm going to be speaking directly to is the fact that when we look at the life cycle of our data, say you are operating today in a completely on-premise uh, um, model and you have plans of moving one or several workloads to the public cloud. Legitimate questions that all customers are asking in such a context is what are the trust assumptions that I have to live with if I am to migrate into the public cloud? And of course, uh, we trust that all of you are already uh, have already adopted industry standards when you are sending your data over the network. And when you send it and it is stored in the public cloud, um, here I'm specifically talking about secondary storage when your data is passive when it is pretty much, well, basically in the hard disk, we trust that most people at this point in time know that they need to encrypt the data when it is at rest and that the encryption keys need to be either protected at the client side or they are protected in some sort of uh, uh, hardware HSMs at the public cloud providers infrastructure. Unfortunately, when your data is encrypted, you cannot draw any insights from it. You cannot compute over this data. Say that you have a database for your employees' salaries, uh, for the history of your uh, um, all of your company's salaries, and then at some point in time, after having it securely stored in the hard disk of the public cloud provider of your choice, you decide that, hey, you want to know who has been the highest paid employee in Department X. Currently, or up until recently, I would say, the only way to do that, if you are still to use the computational resources of the public cloud, is to basically move this database or this data from the hard disk into the public cloud system memory, into its random access memory, its RAM. And once you do that, in order to uh, run your computation, you have to decrypt this data. And that is the gap. This is that uh, this is the in-use insecurity that we talk about. Um, in the next slide, I want to further motivate why in-use security is a problem that we actually really, really want to solve in public cloud deployments. So, whichever um, industry you are uh, working with your applications are going to be living in ring three. Uh, here we are adopting the terminology or the jargon of x86 uh, architectures. So you will be running as a, a user level application. And you don't need actually to understand all the components or all what is showing in this, in this slide. But the message I really want to uh, emphasize here is that as a user level application running in ring three, you have to trust a lot of code underneath you. You have to trust a lot of privileged system code, for instance, the guest operating system, the hypervisor, the system management mode. You have to trust them in the following sense. If there is any vulnerability, let's say in the hypervisor code, and this has happened before, it's not, we're not talking about a hypothetical. If there is a, a vulnerability which breaks down the isolation guarantees of inter VM communication, then suddenly your workload can be compromised by another VM, which is uh, living on the same infra infrastructure. And to further uh, uh, showcase or illustrate how bad this trust that we put in the public clouds bloated system level software, well, I just want to put it as a fact there is that this is not hundred, uh, hundreds of codes or uh, even thousands of lines of code. These are millions lines of code. And this code has been developed by hundreds of developers over many, many years and decades. And I think I'm not comfortable with trusting all of this code. I'm not comfortable for tr with trusting it for two reasons, because I know that humans developing it as are fallible and maybe they have somehow introduce some buffer overflow vulnerability. But the second reason, which 
yeah, we have to acknowledge is maybe there is some malicious intent from the public cloud providers and maybe there is a backdoor there. So we want to protect our workloads ideally from both of these uh, vulnerabilities, malicious and non-intentional security vulnerabilities. Unfortunately, when you are running in the public cloud, you also have to deal with other insecurities. For instance, the public cloud operator administrators, the ones who might have access to your physical machines or the ones who are configuring your virtual machine. And with that, you also have to trust or trust that your data at some point in time might be requested by some third party a government entity, for instance, which might subpoena your, your, the cloud providers to hand over your data. This might happen sometimes with your uh, consent and while you are being informed. And in other times, unfortunately, it might happen without you being put in the loop. So again, these are all trust assumptions that people who move their workloads into the public cloud have to accept. This might be acceptable uh, if you run your uh, risk assessment exercise for some workload. These might be acceptable trust assumptions to live with. But studies have shown that a lot of people in especially regulated industries such as financial sector or the health sector, they, they their, their assessment is that they cannot accept these trust assumptions and thus they do not move to the public cloud. And understandably so. Because this is such a, uh, a critical problem for a lot of uh, industries, there have been a lot of efforts coming from different communities in the cyber insecurity in order to resolve it. So I want to highlight here uh, three main efforts. There is what I would refer to as the idealistic community or the idealistic approach. These are people who have the very noble and ambitious goal or completely redesigning of completely redesigning our privileged system level software. So they want to have a perfectly secure, provably secure and trustworthy, let's say, operating system or, or firmware. And while these efforts are actually very much recommended, we have to acknowledge that this, this approach is, is far from being practical and from being adopted by people who are working in industry, basically. And then the second effort is what I refer to as the strictly cryptographic approach of people who want to allow us to compute over encrypted data. So this would be, for instance, homomorphic encryption or a other uh, um, um, semantically equivalent approaches such as multi-party computation. Uh, these efforts or these primitives have come a very long way. Uh, today we're talking about performance. We're able to perform some certain limited set of functions with acceptable uh, performance. Uh, but the reality remains that general purpose computation with performance that is accepted in many industries is not something that is achieved today with these cryptographic uh, technologies, which leaves us or which brings us actually to what I would like to uh, qualify as the really pragmatic approach. The one which uh, uh, recently is referred to as confidential computing. And the idea, just to put it at a, as a simple high level, what we want to achieve is to execute those security sensitive pieces of our workload, its code and data that we care about in some sort of hardware protected black box. And this black box should ideally live somewhere in the hardware, let's say in the CPU, where it cannot be accessed and it cannot be tampered with by any piece of the privileged system level software. So the operating system, it, can, it should not be able to know what I am running inside of this black box. So I would say this is a, a pretty good a, a goal to aim for. And if it is to ever exist and to be deployed in a public cloud provider, it, it would. It would motivate a lot of people who otherwise would have security concerns against moving into the public cloud to finally um, uh, make the move. In order to achieve this black box execution vision, let's if you if you think about it, there are two things which you would want as a as a consumer of this technology. You want to have guarantees that this black box is really, really isolated 
from everything else outside of that hardware where it lives.